Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass and today we are out on Lake Chickamauga, but I wanted to sit down and take a minute and talk to you about how to catch a monster bass today. We're talking about swim baits and big baits and it's a very, very short window. It's important enough that we needed to stop and sit down and talk about it now. About a month ago, we did a sit down style video talking about how to catch a big bass in the post spawn. And I explained to you guys that you had this short window and it built up to the full moon in June. Well, guess what? Here we are. You've got a few days until the full moon in June. And I'm telling you, this is the best time after the spawn all the way around until we get into fall to specifically target a monster bass on a swim bait. Now, can you catch big bass other ways throughout the summer? Absolutely. But if you wanna target a giant, it's a very short window. You've got to get out to the lake and do it right away. This full moon in June triggers something in these bass. It does it every year, year after year. And these big ones get out and they feed aggressively and they target large profile meals one more time. Once that big moon passes, it just starts to fade away and you're into your summer patterns. So in that video, I explained the baits. So we're gonna break them down again and I'm gonna add a couple others because since that video, we have been driving all over the country and we've, we've fallen in love with a couple of other baits, some that I didn't expect to fall in love with. So I'm gonna include those two. But the gist of it is you've got three categories. You've got soft baits, typically boot tails this time of year, hard glide baits, single joint typically, gliding baits, large profile baits, and then wake baits. We'll start with the wake bait. I keep it really, really simple. Uh, typically the BBZ is the bait that I'm throwing during this moon phase. There's a couple others as well. And I don't even have my wake bait box on the boat today, unfortunately. I left it in the truck because I'm not on a topwater bite here. But I'll link down in the video description. I'll break down the baits perfectly for you so you can click on them, see the pictures, and it makes it really, really simple. But the wake bait is number one. And where you're gonna wanna do this, these are the fish that have backed out and pulled off. They're gonna be sitting on the long tapering points, island tops, it's essentially your offshore fish because you know after the spawn, your bass split. Some go up into the shallows, some go out deep. The fish in the shallows, they'll eat a variety of things. But the fish that go out, they're typically gonna drop down. You're gonna be throwing a jig, a worm, a deep crank, a smaller bottom mounting swim bait, except for this window where they pull up and they feed really aggressively one more time. So those fish, you're gonna target with these big baits. So you might be throwing that wake bait in five to 10 feet of water on the edge of a point. You might be throwing it suspended in 50 to 100 feet of water in a reservoir where you're calling those suspended fish up. If you're on a good point and you know they should be there and you're not getting bit, don't be afraid to turn around and bomb one out to the open. In our reservoirs, these fish love to come up and suspend just below the surface. And it works all over the place. I know it works out here in this part of the country too, because I've been out throwing deep cranks and I can't tell you how many times I've turned around and fired a cast out to like 30 or 40 feet here on the Tennessee River, planning to burn that thing down and it hits the surface, you get like one crank and get bit. There's largemouth suspended out there in that current, just like we have in the West. So the first style, wake bait. Second style, glide baits. Single joint glide baits. You guys know how much we love the S waiver. Both the 200 size and the 168. This is a 168. If I could only have one, that's the bait because I can fish it out, I can fish it in, I can fish it tight to cover, I can pull fish up off of points, and it's a great size profile to match thread fins to match gizzard shad to match all your pan fish and bait fish it's just a good size the 200 size will call fish farther as will the bait sanity both are great baits for their price 
both baits are going to pull fish up. Now, during this time frame where you're doing this, depending on your water clarity, you're going to be pulling fish different distances. If you've got pretty murky water, you might not be pulling them more than five or 10 feet. If you have crystal clear reservoir water, you could be pulling these fish 20, 30, 40 feet to eat the bait. And if that's the case, the larger the profile, the better. The bigger the bait, the more drawing power that the bait is going to have. So keep that in mind. The smaller the bait, the less distance they're willing to travel to eat it. It's just a fact that this is a more worthwhile meal than this. So they will come farther to get it. Especially with the glide, with that slow swimming action, it's just methodical. Those fish will come a long ways to get in there and just track behind that bait. And then as you know, we use two rod twitches to get that bait to cut to trigger the strike. The last category, besides the couple of bonus baits, is going to be soft baits. Typically, I'm throwing boot tails this time of year. The Osprey, both the six inch and the seven inch Osprey, and then a 6.8 Kitek are awesome options. Uh, there used to be tons of, well, there still are tons and tons of baits in this category, and a lot of them work. Uh, but the Kitek works so well. It's got such a wide tail kick. It moves so much water. It comes in a bunch of great colors. That bait is so efficient at what it does that it's eaten up a lot of the category for me. The Osprey is one of the only other ones that I still throw. The Osprey, I like it in that top hook version. They also make a belly version. If you're out there off the ends of those points, you throw it with that belly version, call those fish up. But I love that top hook. And then this guy, you can rig it either, if you're trying to get suspended fish and you're counting it down, I'll use my head, the Matt Allen swim bait head, just like this. And I just take a clip off the nose so that the profile matches. Or I'll throw it on an owner beast hook. And then you can throw it in and around anything. You can count it down, you can roll it on the surface, it doesn't matter. Now, three baits that I'm adding to the mix because of the success that we've seen while we're going around the country here. One is the Matt Lure Shad. Now, it's not a boot tail style bait. It's got a more natural style tail, but its profile and its size has excellent drawing power and we've been having a blast with this bait. You guys saw the fish that we caught on Allen Henry in Texas with this bait. Uh, we've had a lot of fun with it. It is a bait that if you're on a gizzard shad lake, see, a bait like this, it'll cross over. This is actually a kokanee color, but you can imitate a trout, you can imitate a kokanee, you can imitate a gizzard, but a lot of baits can't cross over. Uh, they look very much like one thing. If you're on a gizzard shad lake, that big mat lure shad is an awesome profile for you. And it fishes really well on a straight retrieve. It's got a great action. They're gonna eat that thing. Second one, this is Scottsboro Tackle. It's their line through. Comes in a five inch and, a, this is a five inch, comes in a five inch and a six inch. Again, if you wanna throw out over those points and call fish up, especially if you're calling them up out of cover, that's an awesome way to go. And they'll come up and just wolf that thing. Those are really, really nice baits for the price. They fish extremely well. And then the last one, this is a Gantorel. And I have got to admit that I missed the boat on this one. So you guys know that as a whole, I don't like bluegill profile baits. If I wanna imitate a bluegill, I will throw an S waiver in a bluegill color. Because to me, a bluegill is a naturally difficult thing for a bass to eat. It is, that, that's just a fact. So to me, imitating something that's hard for them to eat means that your bait is going to be hard to eat. So the problem with bluegill profile baits is that the fish bounce off them a lot. It's not that they don't eat them. It's not that they don't try. It's that they can't always get them in. And it's incredibly frustrating. So I shy away from bluegill baits as a category. Um, I stick to those slimmer profile baits in bluegill type colors. Now, that doesn't mean that you can always get the same amount of bites. Sometimes I get less bites than a bluegill profile, 
but I'm landing so many more of my fish that it's worth it to me. That said, I got my rear handed to me by a couple of buddies throwing a ganterelle while I was down in East Texas. And they were wailing on the fish. And somehow, I've thrown the bigger, I've thrown the giganta, the giganta, giganterelle, is that right? Yeah, giganterelle, a bunch. Tim and I both have them, we throw that bait. But it's big, big profiled. So somehow, I just missed the boat on the ganterelle. I played with it a little bit, I just, I didn't see it. But when somebody else picked it up with confidence and started wailing on them, and I sat here and looked at it, as bluegill profile baits go, it's very slim. There's not a lot in the way of the hooks. That is probably the best bluegill shape that I have seen from a hookup standpoint. Uh, I was very impressed with that bait and then took it, went up to Arkansas, caught fish myself. Um, I had a blast with that bait. So it doesn't fit that offshore category unless your fish are specifically bluegill eaters. But some lakes, that is the case, especially pond guys. That's that main profile, that main forage. With this moon coming up, get out there, throw a bluegill style bait or a bluegill colored bait. But I will say that ganterelle, it gets them really, really well. I was very impressed by that. I am never ashamed to learn or to get schooled by somebody. And that was cool because I have needed to fill that bluegill category and I missed the boat on that one. And I know a lot of you didn't miss the boat and you're nodding right now, like way to finally notice that that one fits exactly what you wanted. So bluegill style baits or bluegill colored baits, but not those tall profiles. That one fits the bill. But again, guys, you've got a few days for this pattern. It will work right after the moon, but it's gonna crash every single day after the moon. So you've got like three, four days to really get out there Pursue that big bait bite one more time. Catch those fish that are specifically targeting big meals. They will eat. You can catch double digit bass this time of year and you can catch them by targeting them, not by randomly catching them on something you aren't expecting. Once this window closes, then it starts changing. We'll circle around and talk about that here soon. But for now, get out there, chase that swim bait bite one more time if you get a monster, we want to hear about it down in the comments. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. As I mentioned before, we're going to link all of the baits down in the video description so you can go right to them. We appreciate you, and we'll talk to you soon.